So for today's lecture, this is the last two bullet points for chapter 12, part three. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, mean shear test and critical correlations. And also very briefly, I uh, will touch on the sensitivity of clays. And for both mean shear tests and empirical correlations, uh, we are actually focusing on this undrain shear strength parameter of clays. So something we discussed when we're talking about the uh, CO triaxial and UU triaxial test. So undrain shear strength of clay is an important strength parameters. So wind shear test is used to determine CU. And also we'll talk about empirical correlations. So first, what is a wind shear test? Now, if you look at the bottom two figures, the left one is a field wind shear test device, and the one on the right is a lab wind shear test device. So basically this is a test used to determine the undrain shear strength. Remember that's C sub U of very soft to medium cohesive soils. So basically clays. And if you look at this picture on the right-hand side, this shows basically the schematic of this uh, wind shear test and also a zoom in view of the device. So this wind shear test device consists of typically four equal sized thin steel plate. And these four thin steel plates are welded to a steel rod at the center. So this is a steel rod. So this is called a torque rod. So this torque rod, as the name suggests, is basically used to apply a torque. During this wind shear test, you push this wind shear device into a desired depth, and then you apply a torque on this torque rod at the center and this torque rod is going to create that rotation tendency to rotate. And the soil cylinder, so you have a cylinder of soil with height H, so that's the height of the soil cylinder, and diameter of D. So that cylinder of soil is going to resist the torque you apply on top. And you're going to apply this torque at a uniform speed until you fail the soil. So that's basically how that wind shear test is conducted. It's a pretty simple test to do. And then you correlate the undrain shear strength CU to the torque you applied and also the di some dimension parameters and assumption you made on how that resisting momentum is distributed. So that's this equation 12.54 here. So this is also called Cowding's equation. And if you look at this equation, left-hand side, of course, that's the undrained shear strength C sub U from wind shear test VST. And on the right-hand side, there are a few parameters in this equation. T here, this is the torque you applied on top to fill the soil. And then D and H are the basic diameter and height of the soil cylinder, which is also the dimension of the uh, seam blade. And there is a parameter beta in this equation. And the value of this beta depends on the assumption you made about how that resist, resisting moment is distributed throughout the, the uh, thin plate. And there are three basic assumptions. One is for triangular pattern, one is uniform, and one is parabolic. And I've included three figures on the right-hand side. So for, for instance, for the, let's say for the uniform mobilization of shear strengths, for this assumption, you assume that the shear strength at the top and bottom, so this is D, remember this is a diameter dimension. So at the top and bottom of the steel rod is the same. And this mobilization of shear strength is uniform throughout the rod. So this is an assumption you made. So that basically affects the parameter beta. So that's Cowding's equation. And then it's this equation 68.1. Um, so the Cowding's equation basically gives you that CU from VST. For foundation design, it is found that as the plasticity of soil increases, the CU value calculated from this Cowding's equation may be unsafe. So that's why there's a correction factor. This gamma is a correction factor you apply to the value calculated from CU VST, and you use the corrected value for designing purposes. And this correction factor lambda is a function of Soil's plasticity index PI. So that's this equation 12.61. So basically, you apply some correction based on the plasticity of soil. And there are different 
types of uh, corrections. And the one I'm listing here, uh, this is one of the commonly used one. And you can also correlate the Andrian shear strength to the overburden pressure. So this sigma naught here, this is overburden pressure. And this is also basically the vertical effective stress. So you can correlate CU to the vertical effective stress through plasticity index. So this PI again is plasticity index. And again, there are different types of correlations and I'm listing here two commonly used one. So the Scampton's relationship, this is for NC clay, normally consolidated clay. And then lattice case, this relationship is for over consolidated clay. And OCR here is over consolidation ratio. So these are commonly used empirical correlations between CU and the overburden pressure, which again is basically vertical effective stress. And for wind shear tests and empirical relationships, I have prepared a couple of examples. So let's go over a couple of examples. There is only just one bullet point left for this chapter. Very briefly, I want to talk about sensitivity of clays. This problem, this concept arises because of the characteristic of clay deposit. So for clays, if you take clay sample from the field and put it, put it in a lab to test the strength, the strength you get is called the remoted strength because there's a disturbance during this process. And for clays, we measure, we quantify this disturbance using this sensitivity parameter. So this is called the degrees of sensitivity which is defined as the ratio of undisturbed shear strength value, the C sub U, over the remoted shear strength parameter, C sub U remoted. And this is the same as Q sub U undisturbed over Q sub U remoted. And if you look at this figure here for undisturbed clay soil, the QU value, and for remoted, the QU value is much lower. So for a natural, most natural clays, this degree of sensitivity ST value is between one and eight. So one being a perfect sampling. So basically there's no disturbance in the clay is very ins is insensitive. And as you increase the, as the sensitivity value increases, the clay is basically more sensitive to disturbance. So for insensitive clay, that ST value is one. So basically remoted and undisturbed has the same strength. And for very quick, extra quick clay, you may have ST value larger than 64, 32 to 64 and larger than 64. So some clays known as quick clays, they have very high sensitivity number and they will turn into viscous liquids upon remoting. And this is the case for that Norway landslide case we talked about back in chapter four. So remember that recent landslide. So these clays are actually very sensitive clay. They're quick clay. So a little bit of disturbance causes the clay to turn into viscous fluids. Finally, there's another concept. So basically the loss of strength of clay from remoting is due to the deconstruction of clay particle structure. But if you keep clay undisturbed after remoting, it will gradually regain strength. So this is shown on this figure here. So you have remoting. So first the uh, undisturbed, unconfined compression strength QU is at a higher level. And upon remoting, that QU value decreases. And that degree of disturbance, we measure it using ST. But if you keep clay undisturbed, it's going to gradually regain strength. So you see this hardening behavior. And this phenomenon is called a thicosotropy. So basically the process of clay gaining, gradually regaining strength when it's kept undisturbed after remoting. Again, if you remote, you see all these cycles here. If you remote, the QU value is going to decrease and then it's going to harden if you keep it undisturbed. So that's the last bullet point for chapter 12. And this concludes the shear strength of soil discussion.